Today we will uh, um, talk about uh, MDTD part three. This is the outline of this presentation, introduction, Lampert components, FDTD formalism 14 slot. Near field to far field transformation, analysis of periodic structures, and then conclusion and presentation of the projects. So last time we uh, see how to do the excitation in FDTD, the computation of the solution in the frequency domain, the CP FDTD or contour paths FDTD, and the PML absorber of Béranger, and all Holland thin Y formalism. So now we will see the lumpent components. In the FDTD method, a lumpen component is assumed to coincide with electric field component. Uh, the linear linear lumpen components that we will consider the the the, the are this ones, so the resistor, the capacitor, the inductor, or the resistive voltage source. Let's start with the resistor. Uh, so imagine the resistor is located at the same position as a, uh, an electric field component, and suppose it is in Z direction, so the R is in the uh, same position as EZ. Um, and then we have to use first the Ohm relation, so V equal IRR, and the relation between the voltage and the electric field component, elect uh, electric field. So voltage here, because it is in Z direction, uh, at time instant n will be minus EZN over delta Z. And then the current, by using this uh, Ohm relation, V equal RR, is obtained here by doing an average of the electric average of the field in time. So EZ at time n plus one plus EZ at time n over two. And we divide here by RR, multiplied by delta Z. This is equivalent to the V, but because electric V, uh, the uh, resistor is, uh, uh, because we have to use electric field and the electric field it's uh, actually the, the, the current is calculated at the same time as magnetic field as we have seen before. So we have to do this average in time. Then we use the electric current density. So electric current density is calculated by using the current. So IZ at time n plus half, and we divide here by delta X, delta Y. So we use uh, this relation before actually. We use it for the thin Y formalism. And uh, as we have done before, we use Ampere's law to introduce the current density. So the rotational of H is given now by this relation. We have here the current density, which is function of the resistor R. And here, this is just a the, the um, current displacement, so this one is, is uh, like a the usual. So what we can note here is when the resistor is, is very low, if the resistor's value is very low, uh, this, can, this term here can be very high. So we need actually to decrease um, the, the, the time step when the resistor is very low. So we will see it actually the, the final relation is this one. So the habitat of electric field EZ where we have the resistor. So this is how we can, we're going to, to, uh, to model the resistor is we change 
the equation for the update of EZ. So now we have the resistor. If resistor is infinite, we have the same formula than before. So this, this one becomes zero, zero, and then we have exactly the same formula as without resistor. If resistor is, is uh, very small, so close to zero, uh, then we, we have a problem of uh, some very high value here. And uh, uh, so, and, and uh, as we know, the computer is limited and we cannot uh, um, have very, very high value. So we need to decrease the time step delta t in order to keep uh, uh, stability actually. We can also model a capacitor and the capacitor. So we use this relation between the current and the voltage C dV over dt. And uh, dV over dt, which we use the relation of the voltage with the electric field. And uh, um, the, derivative, the derivative here of dV is resolved by using um, forward difference. So here, the forward difference, you have Ez at n plus one minus Ez at n divided by delta t. And we multiply by delta z to get um, um, yeah, we multiply by delta z to get uh, v. So after that, so there was a step here we didn't show is we write the current density as a function of the current by dividing it by delta x delta y. And then when we we use Ampere's law and we introduce here the current density in Ampere's law and we resolve the, the equation that will give us the update of Ez like we did for the resistor. If we do it for the capacitor, it will be like this. So let, let me just draw again. We can't hear you. Uh, you cannot hear? Yep, it's bad. The quality is bad. Tablet, is it better not like this? Yep. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so now, if in the cell we have here EZ, this is where we can have a resistor, or well, this is a place we can have a resistor or a capacitor or an inductance. And we modelize that by changing the update of this EZ. Or so we did it is we, we analyze what would be the current density and the density, the, the current, and we introduce that in Ampere's law. Capacitor. Uh, let's analyze uh, what happened for different value of capacitor. If capacitor is small, there's no problem. If, if it becomes very high, then this may, um, it's not a problem too, actually, because this becomes close to zero. Um, 
yeah, so the capacitor value can be, is, it doesn't have a, a bad effect on the stability. For the inductor, uh, so suppose we have an inductor with an inductance L, then we have this relation between the, the current and the voltage. It's one over L integration of uh, from zero to T of V2 to D2. By using this formula and using it in a discrete form, uh, then this integration actually is, is a summation. So from M equal one to N of EZM. So we save the field, we save the is uh, the electric field at all time instant from EZ, uh, EZ for, from M equal one to N and uh, at this position, and then we do a summation to get this relation here. We divide by L, multiply by delta Z, because this is relation between the voltage and the, the, the electric field, and uh, the delta T, because we are integration over uh, uh, time. Um, so we have to multiply here by delta T. So after that, we uh, introduce that in the, the current density, and then we introduce that in the Ampere's law to get the new equation for the update of EZ. So we, we, uh, the, the, the new uh, term will be this one. So all of this is, uh, is a classical uh, update of EZ, and this one is a new term. So we see the inductance here. So if the inductance is high, this becomes really small. If inductance is low, this becomes maybe it could be very high. So if it's close to zero, then we need to decrease delta t to avoid uh, any instability. We can also model um, a resistive voltage source. So instead of having just a resistor here, we also have a, a voltage source, a DC voltage source. And uh, so we have the same equation than before that we, we see here, plus this term, which is due to the voltage. So we just have to use a Kirchhoff, a Kirchhoff law here to get this equation. So now we have, we introduce this in the current density which we introduced in the Ampere's law. And resolving this equation, we got the new equation for the update of EZ. So all this part is the same as, as we had with the resistor, but we have this additional term, which is uh, due to the voltage, Vs. So in one cell, it is possible to modelize a voltage source with a resistor. Uh, using using this different uh, uh, model we have seen before, we can we can uh, do an equivalent circuit for a diode, for example. So a diode can be modelized by um, a serial serial resistor, uh, capacitor, and uh, here the the current, the DC current. And uh, by doing this, we can modelize the current like this. And here will be minus one or plus one, depending on which direction is the the, 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 the orientation of the anode. And, uh, and then we use the voltage, the relation between the voltage and the electric field too. We also have N here. So the, based on the, by using the, this current relation, we can introduce this current relation in the Ampere's law and resolve a new uh, new equation um, for the update of EZ. I do have any question for the lumpen components. No, okay. So let's let's continue with the FDT formalism for thin slot.
So last time we have seen that we can modelize a uh, wire, uh, which diameter is smaller than the, the, the cell. And there, there are many advantages to do that. It's, uh, for example, if we have a, we have a, we have a wire in our problem, metallic wire or yeah, metallic wire, and um, we have uh, other structure that has that have uh, that uh, that have bigger size than the metallic wire. We don't want to mesh all everything based on the metallic wire. We want to use uh, uh, a larger mesh. Uh, to reduce the computational uh, time, and, and uh, for this, the thin wire formalism is very really efficient. And uh, what happens if we have a, a thin slot? And so it's the same problem. We don't want to mesh everything based on that slot, or we can we could use a non-uniform mesh, but this is also uh, more complex and uh, and uh, time consuming. Let's see, for example, this uh, structure here, we have a patch antenna, uh, which is excited to a slot by a microstrip line. If we mesh all the structure based on the, the slot, then you can see that the meshing of this will, 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 uh, will be really uh, huge. So it, it, we use a thin, a thin wire formalism, which is presented here. So the, we consider that the, the thin uh, slots for analysis, sorry. So we consider that the slot is uh, smaller than the, uh, the, the cell. And uh, we consider that the slot, it has to be like this, uh, passing in the middle of a slot of, uh, of the cell. And uh, we consider here HX, EZ, EZ, here we have EY, EY. So inside here we have metal, so EZ is, and EZ equals zero. And the EY here, they are not equal to zero. And so HX will have to use some specific equation to resolve because it cannot use this EZ and e this EZ, otherwise it will look like everything is metal. So we have to use some uh, a different equation to resolve HX. For EY, this EY and this EY, it will not will not have, have problem because they're going to use this HX, and uh, the, co the correction due to the slot will always be include. Um, actually, no. Actually, sorry, no. Uh, we have to modify EY too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just remember, no. yeah. So we have also to modify EY. So the model is this following one. We um, we have to introduce this uh, epsilon RF and mu RF and this uh, uh, equivalent uh, capacitance, which is function to uh, to epsilon RF and which is epsilon epsilon RF delta X over delta Y. So this epsilon is a is a permittivity of the medium, which could be air. And uh, we can show that the capacitance can be written like this. And uh, this K is can be calculated like this. So if we do this, we're going to have the update of HX will, will have uh, this parameter, mu and mu RF, which will be function of A. A is a uh, in the width of the slot, and the same thing for uh, EY. So epsilon RF here, epsilon epsilon RF, uh, which also be function of the of A. Let's see if we can. Okay, let's do a small break.
So the next session is uh, near field to far field transformation. So near field to far field transformation is needed in order to calculate, for example, the radiation pattern of an antenna. Uh, when you calculate the radiation pattern of an antenna, you have to calculate the field in uh, in the far region because if the near field is is different from the far field. Um, and uh, to to do that in FDTD, you don't want to to increase the computer shadow volume because you will increase a lot the the simulation time. And so it will be better if we it will be if it is possible to transform the near field uh, to the far field. And we can, we can do that by using this uh, process that uh, I will describe. So suppose we have this uh, this problem where we have electric and magnetic field, and it's uh, we use a surface a closet it's inside a closet surface. Uh, this surface is called uh, actually that one is called Eugen surface. So it's uh, it's closed in a in a surface. We say that this problem is equivalent to this problem where we have no electric and magnetic field inside, but we have changed the magnetic, the, the electric current density and the magnetic current density, so MS and GS. So these two problems are equivalent based on Huygens principle. So in this one, the current density and the, the electric current density and the magnetic current density, they are given by this relation. So in this problem, that's the original problem, which we say it is equivalent to this problem where the, the electric current density is given by this relation and the magnetic current density is given by this relation. So uh, H1 and e, E1, we know them based on this result here. So we can use a closed surface and we can have the value of E1 H, H1. Based on that, we have GS and MS. Then if we want to know what's the, fi the field uh, due to a, a point that is uh, in the middle here, uh, when it is, so if, if the field is radiated and uh, to this point, which is a distance, um, a certain distance, so the point is M, and we want to know the electric field as a function of theta and phi. We can, we can say that at uh, any point M prime in the surface, we have, um, it's the same direction, in the same angle here, at a certain distance R, um, and uh, so we can calculate that for different points. So what we want to know is this one actually, this from this point to this point. But what we're going to calculate is this one with R here, big R. But if we are large distance, this R and this R, they are almost the same. The only difference is this big R is R prime, uh, uh, yeah, R prime cosinus uh, uh, C plus R. But at long distance, they are the we can consider that they are the same when we 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 analyze the amplitude of the field. But but when we analyze the phase, they are they, there is a difference. So we have to we have to take it to account this difference. So in terms of amplitude, we can say that the field coming from this point or this point they are the same. But for the phase, we have to do a correction.
So using the surface current density, we're going to write the, the vector potential for the far field. So the vector potential A at the position uh, R at frequency F is mu zero for pi, pi and integra integration in the surf Jürgen surface, Gs R prime F exponential minus G car R, R over R dS. So R prime, because we are in the in the Eugen surface, so we integrate in all Eugen surface. And R is this direction that we see here. So here we have the term of phase for the plane wave. And here we have the amplitude uh, decrease or decrease on one over R for the victim potential. So now we can put uh, this R um, outside, but we can we have we this R actually is um, small R minus R prime cosinus C. Uh, let me write again. This is R minus R prime cosinus C. And we say we have exponential minus G car R over R. Okay. So here we have we have a term of phase, and here we have a term of amplitude. In terms of amplitude, if R, this R, small r and big r, they are very large. Uh, then we can we can say it's a, it's almost the same. Yeah, we can approximate with this, this small r. But for the other one, we we, we cannot because phase can change uh, very fast. So we cannot approximate. So we keep. We keep the big R here. We just replace with this relation here. So if I come back now to the presentation. So this is what has been done here. The the small the, the R has been replaced with a small R. Um, and uh, and this one, the n, uh, has the exponential g k r prime cosine of c. So that's what is function of the, int the, the int integration over the Eugen surface. This one also we cannot put on outside the integration because it's a function of the point on the surface. The same thing for this one, which we included in the n. We just put R outside uh, by saying that it is the same as a small R at long distance. So the same thing for the second vector potential, which use the magnetic current density, Ms, we use the same principle. So we, we're going to have uh, L, uh, the new, uh, new parameters, so N and L, or new vectors. And uh, there is a relation between uh, the, the, the vector potential and the electric uh, field. So uh, the electric field at e theta and e phi can be calculated uh, by using this relation if we neglect the term uh, in one over s square. So, so if we do that, we just say that e theta is minus g omega a theta plus uh, eta zero f phi. And if we plus the a with the relation with l phi, and the same thing for f, the function of uh, n theta, 
then we're going to have this relation. The same thing for if phi, then we have this relation. So now we have to resolve L phi, L theta, N theta, N phi. And we can get H theta and H phi by using this relation. So N, uh, so eta zero is the uh, square root of my uh, uh, mu zero of epsilon zero. So it's interested intrinsic uh, impedance um, of the plane wave in uh, free space. Actually, the intrinsic impedance of the vacuum. So how we calculate n and l? Uh, if we use uh, so in Cartesian coordinates, we're gonna have we the, we replace here of the, the GS. So n and l that's the relation we have for n and l. So we have to resolve this in Cartesian coordinates. It will be something like that. So GX cosine is uh, theta cosine is phi. GY cosine is theta sine is phi minus gz sin is phi, et theta. And here, exponential minus gk r prime cosinus psi, and ds, so over the surface. The same thing for n phi, and then l theta and l phi. And oh, we also have to write the cosinus psi here uh, as a function of theta and phi. And this can be done by doing this. Then we have to do another simplification. Um, so why we have to we want to do this simplification? Yeah, we will see that after. So we, we introduce W and U. In W and U, so we multiply the N with G omega exponential G omega R over C. And the same thing for the L, we multiply with the same term. Then we have new relation for W and U. And the main change will be here, the R over, uh, R over C. So R minus R prime cosinus C over C. And uh, the e theta and e phi formula will, will be simpler, will be like this. So up to now, we are just working on a frequency, so we have to find the relation in time domain. And in time domain, you can see because, uh, let me write this relation here. So this important, important relation with uh, in white is uh, a function of t. If you do uh, the Fourier transform, it's f a of uh, yeah. I forgot how we say this. Here. Um, yeah, I just forgot how we say it. So it's a function of this frequency. And then we have f. If we do a derivation of uh, over over time, so f prime t minus two tau. Then the Fourier transform will be uh, g omega f here, and here g omega tau. So you see here tau see here too and you see g mega here is because of because of the first derivative okay so this explain why we did this uh, change of uh, we transform the uh, the previous parameter so let me share again
So this explains why we change uh, N and L with W and U. Because now uh, the, the way it is writing, we have here the G omega, and this one can be the tau. And uh, here the G omega is like a derivative. If you go, we go back in time domain, then it, it, with the G omega is replaced by the derivative here with, with, with the time. So first derivative with time. And the tau here is, is this one. So now that means the omega is, uh, is simply the derivative with time of the integration of GS. Uh, and we have all, we have just to do here the um, uh, retardation. So we have to calculate, uh, instead of calculate at time t, we, we use this value at time t minus two, two. And tau is a function of r minus r prime cosinus c of c. And uh, if we do the inverse, so we say we calculate a t plus two, then it will give us this relation. So resolving this equation um, without going in details will be uh, given by this uh, as a function of um, omega x. So this is equation of update. So after we get omega x ux, and so all the value in the Cartesian coordinates, uh, we calculate omega theta, omega phi, and u theta, and uh, and u phi, and then from that we can get e theta and e phi, and e theta and e phi can be used to get the radiation pattern. So I hope this was clear enough. Uh, do you have any question? So I explained the main principles, but uh, I didn't go in all the details. For example, the last one here. Uh, but I think I explained the main the main uh, principle and the main uh, tool that are being used uh, to resolve this problem. So with this uh, solution using the Wiggins principle with the Yugen surface, so it's a closed surface, we can calculate the field in the far field without um, uh, having to use a very long distance and very high, large potential volume. In the anechoic chamber, uh, there is many anechoic chambers, or the, what we call the near field um, anechoic chamber, they use this method. So they, they measure the field in the near field, and they, calc they do calculation uh, of the far field by using this technique. So they have to calculate the field in a closed surface. And from that, they can extract and get the field in the far field. So the, this principle, uh, this method is uh, general, and it's not uh, limited only to FDTD. But we have shown here how we can, re um, how it is included in FDTD. Uh, do you have any question? No. So let's go to the next uh, chapter or next uh, section. It's an analysis of periodic structures. So before before starting this part, I will uh, I will come back to the boundary condition. Yeah, this one I will I will share with my tablet. So we will see some basic uh, some uh, basics on uh, boundary. So if we use uh, PMC,
suppose in the left, that's a computational volume and uh, the other side is a mirror. So the mirror here will be an electric field in the same direction if it's PMC. And uh, if we continue, if we are still in PMC and the electric field is in this direction, then the mirror will be like this. It will be like the electric field is in the opposite direction. If we use a, um, the PEC, so perfect electric conductor, and we have here like this electric field, the mirror will be, the image will be in the opposite direction. And if we use a, a pack here, an electric field in this direction, the image will be in the same direction. Then let's analyze the magnetic field. For the magnetic field, if we use PM, PMC, the magnetic field here will be in the opposite direction. And uh, if the edge field is like this, it will be in the same direction. And uh, if we have a PEC and we have a magnetic field, it will be in the same direction. And uh, if the edge is perpendicular, then here it will be in uh, opposite direction. So I think most of you uh, know this. Uh, it's good to 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 remind them. Uh, then the question will be, is it possible to have a, a certain boundary where you have E and H? Okay, for example, if this is direction, and the image will be exactly the same, E and H. And also, if E and H are like this, E or H, E or H like this, it will be also the same, the, the image will be in the same direction. So that kind of boundary is another kind of boundary, is not PMC or PEC. We will call it uh, image. Perfect electric conductor is like modelizing a metal, which is a perfect metal without uh, loss. Uh, perfect magnetic conductor is not necessarily something uh, that exists in nature. Is uh, sorry, yeah. is it is we can we can uh, approach uh, the magnetic conductor by using what we call artificial magnetic conductor, and they behave actually uh, in the same way as uh, PMC, but they are they usually they are no bad. Image is also another kind of uh, uh, non-natural uh, boundary condition. And uh, uh, this can be useful if we, for example, we want to analyze the periodic structures. Uh, for example, um, if you have a certain periodic structures where this uh, boundary condition uh, are correct, you don't want to analyze, to, to, to simulate a very, uh, big structure you you're going to simulate only one cell and the simulation of one cell will be enough in order to characterize your periodic structure so that's the advantage of using uh, the, the uh, periodic boundary condition um, so in every td how can we do the image in every td we can we can do a, a image boundary condition by doing this method um, I think I need a new save this figure. I don't know how can I share I can share it. Okay. It, it, it is in the video, so no problem. 
So now I will delete this. So how we do it in FGTD? So suppose we have a certain period because we talk about periodic structures, so we have a certain period. Um, so it's not the size of one cell, it's a cell. It's a period, it, it's made of multiple cells. And suppose here we, um, the first cell in, so that's, suppose this is Y. First cell, we start with an EZ. And the EZ here is, for example, zero, zero position. And uh, at half mesh, we have HX, which is zero, half. And um, then that's that will be for the first cell here. And the last cell, should finish with the edge x. Just below it, we have z zero and y. We can't hear you. Not hear well. We can't hear you. Uh, it's, Is better now? Yeah, yeah, it's right. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry, because I talk <laughs> close to the tail tap, not uh, not close Fine, to the. Okay. Okay. okay, thank sorry. you. Yeah. So suppose so we have uh, the first cell is E Z zero zero, and then H X zero half. All of this is in the first cell. And the last cell in uh, Y direction is E Z zero N Y and H X zero N Y plus half. So how can we modelize the image? We say that the this EZ, this one here, is equal to, uh, not sorry, this EZ00 is equal to that one. Okay, because that one is already in the computational volume, EZ0 and Y. So the EZ00, we impose, that's a, that's a, in, that's a, the boundary. We say that because, we, we cannot calculate the EZ00 because we don't know what's the HX below. We cannot use uh, the, the, the the algorithm, the FDT algorithm, because you, you need all the HX around the EZ. So EZ is a boundary. We need to do a specific modification. So that EZ will be equal to the EZ0 and Y. Okay. And that HX, which is at the uh, boundary, this one, will be equal to that one. We do that, then we, we, we ensure that our problem will be something like that. We'll have image. image. But for, for many problems, PMC and PEC can be enough. It depends. If we have only one polarization, we have only a one uh, polarization, then PMC PEC can be enough. But if we want to use really the, the more general image, that's the way we can do. 
Uh, I hope it was clear. Please let me know if it is not clear. So for example, we can have a certain antenna, then that means you have image like this. So it means uh, if, if I can use image in everywhere, like a square, then a periodic structure, which, which can be infinite, a periodic structure like this, with an infinite number of elements, etc. These go to infinite. These go to infinite, the same thing in all direction. Then you can simulate only one cell. And for example, you can analyze transmission and reflection for a, for a surface that is made of periodic structure just by using one cell. Uh, the same thing for uh, uh, antenna array. Uh, this can be used for, for antenna array too. Um, yeah, so let me stop this. Please let me know if uh, it was not clear. After this introduction, let me go back to the to this. Yeah. So let's consider a, a specific problem where we want to analyze the reflection and transmission from a periodic structure that is made of metallic wire. So it's a simpler structure. And because it's made of metallic wire in this direction, um, and also the polarization, actually, we, we will, polarize, we will uh, consider only polarization, vertical polarization of electric field because um, Horizontal polarization will not have an effect. The suture will not have an effect on the horizontal polarization, a very small effect. So we consider electric field in this direction. Uh, because of this, uh, the, the boundary actually will be simpler, as we will see. So we want to send a plane wave, and we analyze what is a transmitted wave, what is a reflected wave. And the metallic wire have the diameter of A, and the period is uh, Pt. The reflection coefficient is defined like this. It is amplitude of the reflected wave uh, over the amplitude of the incident wave at the position x equals zero, that's the position of the surface. And the transmission coefficient is amplitude of transmitted wave over amplitude of incident wave at the position, the same position x zero, x naught, x equal to zero. So in the LDTD, we can modelize it like this. So we use, we use current sources. We have seen that in the previous uh, class. So we use a, a lot of current sources like this to generate a plane wave. We use P, a perfect magnetic conductor and uh, in the, here in the, um, so what's this one? X, X, O, X, O, Z. Play, uh, uh, in, the, in the boundary that are parallel to X or Z, and the, in the boundary parallel to uh, X or Y, we use uh, PEC, because electric field is in this direction. So here the electric field is in, in the Z direction. So we use PEC and PMC. We use perfect many, uh, perfect matching layers here and here. We, we want the, the field to be absorbed but actually for this simple problem, because it is plane wave, uh, the wave is, is normal here to the, the, the boundary. We can also use uh, the ABC. So the, the ABC of mu that we have seen before, we could use it here too. Uh, this is something you, you, can, you, will try, you, you, you will use actually for your project. And, uh, and it gives very good result. So you don't have to use PML for this, uh, for this problem, actually. So how can we get the, the transmission, uh, transmitted field and the reflected field for this problem? Um, so if, if we calculate the total field at the point, so we consider two points, the point P1 and point P2, they are at, at distance L1 and L2. So if we calculate the field, um, at point P1, um, 
no, sorry, if we calculate the reflected field, sorry. if we calculate the reflected field, so actually field over the incident field at position L1, position L1, it will be R exponential minus GKL1 because reflected field go in this direction. So we have here minus GKL1. And for the incident field, we have exponential plus, plus GKL1 because incident field will go in this direction. So here we have minus, here we have plus. So in the end, we have R exponential minus 2GKL1. So if you calculate reflective at this position, it will not give us reflection coefficient that we say before. We define the reflection coefficient will be like this. It will, it will have a phase here, additional phase. But if we calculate transmitted field at this point, and we divide by incident field at point L2, we have here exponential minus GKL2 of exponential minus GKL2. They both go in the same direction. And uh, so when we divide, we don't have this exponential, we have only T. So what does it mean? It means uh, we have to do a correction for the reflection coefficient, but we don't have to do a correction for T. So if we want to calculate reflection coefficient here, we have to remove incident field because here there is two fields, there is incident and there is reflected. So we take the total field, minus the incident, we divide by incident, and then we multiply by this exponential to GKL1. So it depends on this distance L1. If we do that, then we have the we have the efficient coefficient. For the transmission coefficient, we just calculate total field, we divide by incident field, and that's it. So I have done this for a diff different value of the uh, the diameter over the period. Uh, when the, the the diameter is very, is very small, it's it's a um, you you could use uh, the the thin formalism, but then when it is uh, larger, uh, you can you can mesh the the di the, the wire. So I use both actually here yeah? and uh, for different relation between between different ratio between the the di diameter and the period, we can plot the amplitude of the transmission coefficient and then the amplitude of reflection coefficient. This is versus frequency. Uh, the only thing is the frequency here is, is normalized. Um, we mit I multiply here the frequency with the uh, PT over C. Yeah, just in order to limit the, the frequency domain um, in the uh, in the first order of the flocket modes. So in order to have to don't have the higher flocket modes. This is for the higher flocket modes you, you can see them as the when we you analyze the uh, antenna array, uh, the distance between the elements, if they are larger than uh, lambda, then you have grating loss. It's the same principle here. So I limit the problem to you know to uh, to the first flocking mode. So here we show, I show here a plane wave. So this is with FDTD. So I, I use more than one period just for the visualization, but I could have simulated the problem just with one period. Here I use many periods, you know, just in order to see how this is uh, behaving. So we have PMC here and PMC here. This is a Gaussian excitation. We can see it here, this is Gaussian. So the red, red means a positive value. Blue means negative value. So the Gaussian here will be partly reflected and partly transmitted. So what you see is when the plane wave, so it's really plane, and when you arrive to the periodic structure of metallic wire, it, it loses his Plenitude, or it become not plan, and then it becomes plan at a distance about the, the the period actually, and then it becomes again a plane wave. So because it's plane wave when it's reflected and plane wave when it's transmitted, that means you can use this formulas because they are they are the, they are the same type type of wave. It's a plane wave and divide by plane wave, so it's really a transmission coefficient. The same thing for reflection coefficient. 
So when the wave, the, the arithmetic wave arrive to the metallic wire, the metallic, the, there is a current that will be created in the, the metallic wire. And this will, uh, the current will be created in the opposite direction of the electric field. And this will generate a diffracted wave with the, with the opposite uh, amplitude. That's why we have blue. You see here, the blue one is a negative. So it's due to the diffraction of the, the metallic wire. Yeah. And that diffraction will be added to the transmit to the incident wave on the other side. So that's incident wave is continuing on the other side, but it is added to the diffraction. See. So this is a superposition between this blue here and the red one, which we continue on the other side, makes you the transmitted wave here. So uh, do you have any question for the uh, for analysis of predictive structure or the other sections? Uh, no. Okay, so now we go to the conclusion and presentation of the projects. Um, be, be, yeah, before presenting the project, I will send you um, three uh, FDT decodes that use MATLAB. And the first one is uh, one dimensional, second one two dimensional, and the last one three dimensional. So you you can you don't have to start from scratch. So you will start with this uh, ability decode in order to do your project. Um, and uh, uh, the project I propose it, it, uh, is is uh, really feasible based on uh, the use of this codes and based on the the class that we have. So the first uh, project is based on this paper. So this paper, uh, which talk about uh, left-handed medium. So we have a um, negative permittivity and negative permeability. And uh, we send a plane wave. So with the same thing, we use a PMC, PMC, PEC, PC. And uh, absorbing one condition will be enough for this problem. So in this paper, uh, we added a sheet of resistor so very close to that interface here. And uh, you can you can look to the paper what value of the resistor we use in order to have no reflection in this, this interface. So that's the first project is left-handed medium. Uh, the second project is actually a continuation of this one. But instead of using only one, layer of metallic wire, we're going to use uh, two layer of metallic wires. Uh, so you're going to analyze the transmission of friction coefficient, and you can compare the results with, uh, uh, with uh, papers in the literature. So to, because this is a fabric cavity, we'll have multiple reflection here. And at the resonance, the, the, reflect, the transmitted wave here will be um, uh, will be all in phase, and so, so you have maximum transmission. And if you have no loss, no absorption uh, in the metallic wire, all the uh, at the resonance, you have all, all the feed is transmitted, and no reflection. So you, you can analyze this problem by using MDTD. I give here all the details. Uh, you use a Gaussian excitation. Uh, how to choose the maximum frequency, etc. Um, yeah, so you can look at this. This is for the project number two. Uh, project number three, it's uh, uh, a three dB wicked sun power divider. So this is the reference for the result, and you have here all the parameter size for to do the the power divider, port one, port two, port three, and you plot the, the S parameters for this problem. So the side root of U give you all the information about dimension, and then you use this 
uh, procedure to do uh, yeah, to, to do this in MVTD. So that's project number three. You, you will have to choose one project, and this is individual work. So each one will choose one project, uh, and um, and uh, let me finish the last one. It is another, yeah, the last one is this one. Is uh, the frequency selective surface of so the periodic structure here that I showed before here with the with the metallic wire? Imagine it is moving. Imagine this metallic wire they are moving at the same time. You have this result in MDTD, but the metallic wire they are moving. So that's that's the thing where so, so suppose it's moving in this direction, for example. You can move in the other direction too. And you are going to analyze the transmission and reflection region. Maybe something is missing, I should say here. Uh, the best is to use here for the plane wave, uh, for the excitation is to use uh, a window is uh, window uh, sinusoid. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, this one. Okay. If you use a Gaussian, then you will you will excite many frequencies. And here, what happened when the, the structure is moving is you have a Doppler effect. So it's better to use um, if you use a sinusoid, then you Infinite is 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 um, is 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 not uh, how do I say um, uh, is not appropriate for to simulate in MDTD. You don't want something infinite, so use uh, a window it's sinusoid like this with a certain window. So the the that's in time domain t like this. In frequency domain, it it look it will looks like this. It will looks like a sinus cardinal, you know, sinus like like this. And the the maximum here will be your frequency f zero, f not that you have choose. So the frequency of this sinus of it, f not. And if you the FSS move, then you will see in the in the reflection. Uh, you will see in the reflection how this. Uh, how how the spectrum will change? You will have a change of the, in the frequency. If the FSS is coming uh, towards the source, or if the FSS is moving away from the source, you will have a change of the frequency. Okay, you can see you can uh, compare with the literature. Um, um, if if the so that's 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 the source. Yeah, and let's suppose this is FSS. It's moving with uh, speed v. Okay, so the frequency f prime over f should be something less uh, one minus v over c, one plus v over c. Okay. okay, and if it's the opposite direction, then you replace v with minus v. That's for the reflected. So what you're going to analyze is uh, the Doppler effect. Yeah. We'll see how the frequency the frequency is changing. And you by analyzing this, you can plot how the frequency is changing for different speed, and you can compare with this formula, or you can you can do it for two frequency if you want. Or for two speeds, sorry, not two speed. So that's a, yeah. That's a, so, so we have four projects. You choose one project, and uh, in when you send the report, the report should include the FDTD code. So using MATLAB. And uh, also, uh, the report will include uh, the results and the explanation of the result. 
uh, and uh, it's, it's up to you what you want to add and and, and uh, what's the limit you you can uh, put as uh, you you can for, for example uh, the last project I say you can plot uh, more more uh, a curve with a different value of V C or you can plot for two uh, two velocity but that's up to you uh, the more you give the more uh, um, the best it is actually. The same thing for the other problems. You could compare, compare this result uh, with this one. If you want, you can. If you you have knowledge with other software, you could also compare with this. But it's up to you. You don't have to. And uh, this one, you you can compare the result with the result from the literature. And you have this project too. So if we, if I if I want to say in order of uh, complexity, I will say I think this one. Okay, the most diff difficult. So start with the most difficult and then less difficult. So this one, and th there is. Um, uh, you say um, so based on the order of difficulty. I also uh, base my score my uh, the scores on that. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we'll have low score if we do the less difficult. But uh, I mean, so based on the so the the, the ranking of uh, uh, complexity will be this one more complex. And then this one will be second, third, and last. So, do you have any question? Uh, oui, monsieur. Uh, oui. Uh, concernant le, le projet de, de en groupe, c'est conception des mélangeurs et amplificateurs. Donc, uh, uh, c'est en groupe. Oui, ça, je, je, peux, je vais vous en parler ça après, parce que là, c'est la FDTD. Je ne veux pas mélanger okay. avec uh, ce cours-là. Mais je, je vais vous en parler après. Je vais envoyer un message à part pour le, pour la, pour le projet euh, ADS. Vous pouvez le faire en groupe, oui. Oh, okay, merci. Chacun, si vous souhaitez, vous le faites tout seul. Sinon, vous le faites en groupe. Ça, c'est individuel, ce projet-là. FDT, c'est individuel, oui. OK, d'accord. Et l'examen va être un présentiel ou non présentiel? Euh, l'examen, ça, je, je vais vous envoyer un message. D'accord, merci. Merci. Okay, so there is no any other question. So I'm going to send you uh, three FDT codes. Please uh, start to simulate them and see uh, how they behave and uh, look at the codes. And uh, so I gave you until the end of November to send me your report on FDTD. So that's for both, for the students from Ecole Polytechnique and for the students of uh, Université du Québec en Ottawa. So end of November is a deadline. So if there is no any question, thank you very much. And I uh, hope to see you uh, next time. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.